Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I want to show you Render and Replace that now includes rendering with effects. All right, so to a certain extent, you can thank my good buddy Dave Helmley, my former manager at Adobe, for this feature because he uh, dragged the engineers kicking and screaming into understanding why this is important. Actually, in the music world, this is very typical. When effects are heavy and they're dragging down your computer, you want to be able to render them. Render and Replace has been part of Premiere Pro for quite a while, but it did not include effects. It now does, but there are a couple of things to watch out for. Let's go take a look. So I'm going to create some effects on this, and I'm going to particularly use non-accelerated effects. So the accelerated effects really don't need to be rendered because the GPU is making them play back in real time. But we're going to go for some big old uh, effects that are going to require all the CPU. So one of the first ones that I'm going to choose is cell pattern. And you can see over here, there are no, there's no icon for acceleration. So it's not part of it. I'm going to double click on that with that clip selected and add the effect. And I will open that up and choose crystallize. And I'll do that because this actually blends in with the image. The other one really doesn't do much. So um, we'll leave that at 100%, this at one, and this size. We're going to make them smaller. We want this kind of a chunky looking effect. So right away, you'll see the red line show up. And when I try to play this back, it's not going to play back very well. So let's add some more effects just to make it even harder. Uh, good old color emboss. And we're going to leave this at 45. We'll make the emboss a little bit larger. All right. You see, we've got this grungy look, this grungy effect going on, and it's impossible to play this back in real time, even on a smoking fast Dell uh, computer. So we're going, I'll right click on the clip, and I've got two here for a reason. So let's just deal with the top one where I applied the effect and choose render and replace. And here we get several choices. The first is what is the source? And by default, it's the sequence. So when you create a sequence, it has a frame rate and it has a frame size and a pixel aspect ratio. So this is telling render and replace to use those parameters to make the file. You also have formats to choose from, DNxHD, MXF, OP1A, or QuickTime. And again, there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever suits your workflow. And then within each one of those formats, there are presets to use for whatever you're exporting out. And you can see this one says match source. So it's matching the source of the sequence and matching the source of the preset. And if we go to individual clips, now you can choose those same formats. And we only get one choice to match the format. We can also use a preset. So you can pick one of these formats. And in there, we can pick a preset. So you can get a larger list um, of presets. You can also import a preset. So if there was a specific format you wanted, you could use that. <clears throat> I think the important thing to remember here is you can choose a low resolution format that doesn't take up much room in your hard drive, or you can use an absolute gorgeous format that will apply the effect and keep it looking as, as good as possible, including all the way out. So you didn't have to turn this back to a live effect. You could render this now, leave it in the timeline and spit it out, okay? If we go back to sequence and choose these different formats, so for instance, MXF OP1A, you can choose these formats. These are mostly for the broadcast world. MXF OP1A really makes sense uh, uh, to no one outside of the broadcast world, but it's got those formats. And then when we go to QuickTime, 
This is the several formats that we have in QuickTime. The only one that supports alpha channels are the GoPro Cineform 12-bit alpha or 12-bit alpha at maximum depth. So if the effect you've got on another track actually has some transparency in it, maybe it's it's been keyed out or it is an actual um, shape or an object that has that transparency, you have to choose these formats. These are new formats if you're not using the latest version you want to update because I'm on Windows and I can export out QuickTime. Again, either a lightweight version or a 422 version, um, but we've got all those formats in there. So that makes things much, much easier. Then you get to choose where next to original media, uh, where's the destination or another destination. Um, I would probably put this next to the original media because the whole idea is this is different from a preview, which you could lose. A lot of people ask me, how do I save a preview? Well, they can get lost all the time. This one can't unless you put it in the wrong place. So if you put it beside the media, it's going to be a good location and we'll, we'll, co we'll go with the project if you need to move it. You can include handles. By default, it's 30 frames, so basically a second on either side. The reason that you want handles is it's going to render a larger area um, if it's available. In my example here, it isn't. But if you had a longer clip, it's going to render out a longer section. Just in case later on you need to uh, change the in or out, uh, it's got that. And here's the big one. That's the new one. Include video effects. So now when I click OK, it's going to render this. And you'll see that this will change. The red line will disappear. And I'll play this back in real time. I'll speed this up. All right, we now have a yellow bar. And I'm scrubbing this as fast as I can. And it plays back no problem back in real time, and it looks exactly like the original quality with the effect, so it, I'm not really missing anything on here. So let's look over here in the effects controls, and you'll see cell pattern is rendered and color emboss is rendered. I can't turn them on or off, I can't change them, I can't do anything with them. If you need to change them, you need to right click and choose Restore Unrendered, and it will delete the file over here. So if we go back to, go over to our bin, if we go to our project, you'll see there is the rendered file. So it's the same name that I had with rendered at the end of the name. If I unrender this, I don't want to do this because I don't want to have to re-render that, but if I, right click and, and choose um, Restore Unrendered. It will actually remove that file from the bin, but not from my computer. Um, so we'll go back to where I was. I could tweak the settings, but I would need to re-render that and replace it each time. I want to show you that I've got a bottom, which is a duplicate of the top one. So I've got two of the exact same clips. The bottom one doesn't have the effect on it. If I select the top one, open up my opacity settings and change the opacity, then I'm going to blend the effect with the unaffected duplicate at the bottom. So if I change this to 20% and choose divide, now I've got a completely different effect, which will also be live. And you can see I've got this embossed look at the same time I've got what looks more like there's the people are emerging out of that effect. So last thing to um, look at is the motion settings here, things like position, scale, and rotation. You can, those are called intrinsic effects, meaning that every clip has those. You can now render and replace intrinsic effects only if you choose the sequence format mode when, you, when you're uh, rendering and replace. You cannot render and replace um, time remapping and opacity. So 
if you have something set to 50% opacity, render and replace, it will automatically jump up to 100%. Uh, transitions are also not rendered and audio effects are not rendered, but everything else is rendered when you choose render and replace now, if you choose the op option to render the effects. This is huge uh, for people that need performance that are working on heavy effects that are uh, accelerated or not, because you know I could throw a ton of effects on here, big files, and still not be able to play that back. So render and replace now with effects means we've got better performance and a lot more choices, and we still have complete control to unrender and go back and make those settings uh, change, update. All right, thanks to Dave Helmley for uh, requesting this feature. Uh, we, we now appreciate that we've got this. Um, from the engineers. All right, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us more, you can do that through PayPal, like our wonderful PayPal donors who we love so much. Thank you so much. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you informed and up to date on the features that you have in Premiere Pro.